Good afternoon, everybody. This is Ann Katzoff of Ask Design. Welcome to today's tutorial, which is about three great ways to create grids in InDesign. There are a ton of ways to create grids. I have three favorite ways that I'm going to share with you today. Two are really simple. One is a little bit more complex. Let's launch InDesign and get started. Why should you use a grid? Grids are the underlying structure to a layout. They are the skeleton upon which you place the text and images. You don't actually see the grid, but you do see its effects. The elements are organized and aligned, providing consistency and cohesiveness to the layout. Grids are used in the design world for sure. They can also be found in all sorts of other arenas, maps, city planning, architecture, crossword puzzles, keyboards, stereo equipment, machinery, etc. Grids are, in fact, so commonplace that it's easy to not even recognize their existence. Once you start seeing grids in the everyday vernacular, you begin to realize that there is something about them that is very appealing to humans. My guess is that grids provide us with a connection to our inner need to make sense of the world. I always start my designs with a grid and encourage my students to do the same. Don't let your grid, grid constrain your creativity, though. It's okay to stray from it, what we refer to as breaking the grid, in order to position something more organically. Some designers don't use grids. Uh, they move intuitively instead with their own sense of balance and structure, and that's okay, too but I still encourage students to at least get a handle on grids, practice using them, and then decide if the technique works for their design style. And as I mentioned, there are lots of ways to create grids, and they can be simple or complex, but let's begin with one of my more simple uh, methods. I'll call it method number one, preset details command. When you launch InDesign, you'll be prompted to create a new document or open an existing one. Click on the Create New button. You'll get this screen. In the preset details, on the right side of the screen, you want to name your document and check the other fields available to you. Here it's um, a standard letter size, 8.5 by 11. I'm sticking with facing pages. It doesn't matter uh, at this point whether you have facing pages or not. The key part to method number one is the columns field. We're going to change the one default to four, and then we'll click on the create button. The document will automatically have four vertical grids. That's the simple part. Very, very simple. The shortcoming with this method is that you don't have any horizontal guides, so you'll have to add them manually, and we'll learn about that in method number three later on in this tutorial. Method number two, which uses the create guides command, is very similar to method number one. Again, when you launch in design, you'll be prompted to create a new document or open an existing one. Click on the Create New button. In the preset details on the right side of the screen, leave the default one in the number of columns field. The, the, um, sorry, then click the Create button. When the document opens, you'll see it doesn't have a grid yet. Go to the master page area and select a master. Then go to the menu bar at the top of the document. Click on layout. Scroll down to create guides. Fill in the fields for rows and columns. and change the gutters as needed. 
Gutters are the spaces between the rows and columns. You can do a preview. In the options section, I like to fit guides to margins, which divides the page evenly from the margins inward inside this magenta area. Let's click OK. And you'll see, even though we're on the master page, whatever you create on the master page will appear on a regular document page. To make changes, return to the layout, create guides area, and remove existing guides and click OK. I'm not actually going to click OK because I want these to actually stay. Okay, now for method number three, which is to create the grid manually. Again, when you launch and design, you'll be prompted to create a new document or open an existing one. Click on the Create New button. In the preset details on the right side of the screen, do two things. One, select the box next to Facing Pages, even if your document doesn't need Facing Pages, the grid that we're about to build takes advantage of the facing page layout. So be sure that's selected. And then leave the default one in the number of columns. Click on the Create button. When the document opens, it won't have a grid yet. Go to the Master page and select the A Master. Let's get everything on the screen here. Everything you build on the master page will appear on the regular document pages. Select the rectangle frame tool, the one with the X in it. I also call it the picture box. Click and drag on the left page down to the bottom of it so it takes up the entire page. The measurements, let's check the properties, it should be 8.5 by 11 and sit exactly um, at the 00, zero coordinate for x, y, 0, 0. We're going to duplicate that, so go to Edit and copy it, and then paste it and position it on the left, uh, I'm sorry, on the right page. So now that x coordinate will be 8.5 because it's a spread. It counts the left page has eight and a half inches, so that's the new x coordinate, and um, the y still is at zero. So, so far, so good. You notice the x's as we go along. The grid is forming even with, you know, are not doing very much. Lastly, I'm going to select the left rectangle frame tool and um, frame box, sorry, and copy that. But instead of pasting, I'm going to paste in place. So this pastes it directly on top of the original box. And I'm going to drag this so that the width is now 11 inches. Let's check our properties. I'm sorry, the width is 17 inches. It's 8.5 plus 8.5 to be 17. It's still at the 0, 0 xy coordinate. So already you can see what's going on here. We have these magic areas where um, all the x's intersect and it's almost like forming a golden section type of grid. Um, it's almost dividing the page into thirds. So it's um, organically depending on your width and your height, dividing the page into this uh, really interesting um, section of areas. So we've got the intersecting, and now we want to draw guides in from our left ruler, where everything's intersect. Everything really 
That's about the halfway point right there on the page. Cool. And then draw down from the top ruler. And if you hold the command key on a Mac, it goes across the spread. It's cool if it's exact. It doesn't have to be exact. I'm kind of eyeballing it right now. Okay, so there's our grid, and we can actually add other um, guides to this if we want. But um, right now, we have exactly what I wanted to show you in this tutorial. All these intersections are magic areas, and you can continue like here. Here's another new magic section. And it's all happening very organically. As you can see, it pretty much divides the page, each page, into thirds. I hope this tutorial has been useful to you. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to uh, leave them in the comments section. Thanks for visiting and have a great day.